Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Welcome to our service for Sunday, the 14th of June 2020. As we worship today, we've got uh, something slightly different in that we have a children's Bible story with illustrations and a children's song early on. So we'll have our opening hymn, our confession, then the children's Bible story, children's song, and then uh, the other main Bible readings. Let us pray. Jesus said, know that I am with you always, even to the end of time. Father, we thank you that Jesus is with us and we ask your blessing on our worship today, that we may meet with you and be found in you for Christ's sake. Amen. And so we sing our first hymn together, which is angel voices ever singing round thy throne of light. So we come to our confession. Scripture says, the spirit of truth will convict the world of guilt and about sin, righteousness and judgment. We grieve the Holy Spirit. We confess our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord, all praise to his name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we come to our children's story of Jesus the Good Shepherd, followed by the children's song, This Little Light of Mine. The Story of the Good Shepherd Taken from Matthew 18, Luke 15 and John 10 This version is read from First Bible Stories, published by Paragon. All sorts of people came to Jesus and he never turned anyone away. But some of the teachers of the law grumbled. Why was he mixing with people like tax collectors and wrongdoers? So one day, Jesus told those teachers a story. If a shepherd has a hundred sheep, said Jesus, and one of them gets lost, what would the shepherd do? He would leave the other 99 sheep safe in the field and go off to look for the lost sheep. He would not give up looking until he found it. Then the good shepherd would be happy, continued Jesus. He would lift the sheep onto his shoulders and carry it home, calling to his friends and neighbours to come and celebrate with him, for he had found his lost sheep. It is like that in heaven, said Jesus. I am the good shepherd. I have come to look for people who have wandered away from God to bring them home to him. A good shepherd never leaves his flock, even when wolves attack. The shepherd knows every single one of his sheep. The people who follow me are my sheep. I lead them and protect them. I am willing to give up my life for them. Thank you for listening. This light of mine.
is taken from Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by, by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though a good person might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 to chapter 10 verse 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and illness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal those who are ill, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out the demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we come to our notices. First of all, don't forget the giving opportunity on the website or we'll give online. Second, uh, earlier this week I posted on the website um, a talk in three parts on disasters, human suffering, the coronavirus, and uh, they're all about 15 minutes long. It's, it's good to watch all three, and I hope it will stimulate some debate. And if you want to join in with uh, maybe a Zoom session and discussion with a few of you, that would be brilliant as we talk about uh, the issues around today. So uh, that's something to think about. Uh, thirdly, we reopen our churches tomorrow, Monday, for private prayer and for funerals. Uh, same guidelines will be as before. Please wash your hands before you come. Use hand sanitizer as you enter and leave. And uh, I think we'll have some cards like last time. I'm going to reprint some more cards in time, uh, which uh, are with some scripture verses and prayers. Uh, so don't touch them, but use them. And uh, finally, the PCC is meeting tomorrow night as we decide the service plan, God willing, for July and August. And that will be published. And we hope Hill and Dale also will be published um, for July, August. Uh, we'll wait and see. And maybe during July, we might have our services outside if it's nice and warm so that we can sing. We'll see as that comes. More or we know more. So we come now to our sermon, which uh, I hope will be of help to you, uh, based on our two main Bible readings from Romans 5 and Matthew 9. Shall we pray?
Father, we thank you that you speak uh, powerfully through your word and through events and through nature and through people speaking in the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that as I speak and as we listen, your Holy Spirit may teach us and bless us and encourage us for Jesus' sake. Amen. I wonder how many of you have been affected by the, in the last few weeks, by the coronavirus. I wonder how much you've been affected. For some, there's been some good things happening. For example, slowing down, becoming more aware of the natural world, building relationships more deeply at home, learning new skills, finding new inspiration. For others, the effect has been more negative the ache for family further away and only available on FaceTime or Zoom, or for the loss of identity and not doing what we've been used to doing. Some of you may be facing loss of employment or business. Others have found the strain of homeschooling, of being cooped up within four walls, very difficult. Mental health issues have been sharply brought into focus too. Sometimes when we slow down or stop for a moment, we find some of our past uh, unresolved issues rising to taunt us or haunt us. Sometimes it's the silence uh, that can get to us as we face what we may have tried to bury, not realising that God is the one who calls to each of us to be still and know that I am God, as Psalm 46 puts it. It's in the silence. Finally, God has us where he wants us. As we face our issues, find his grace to help us discover healing and peace as we forgive and receive forgiveness. Our gospel reading speaks about Jesus going out into the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Jesus' ministry was always accompanied by signs following, healings, lives changed by his grace and mercy, hope being given to the outcasts and downtrodden. Jesus was at home with every section of the community, from eating in posh houses to being in the highways and byways amongst the lepers, tax collectors, prostitutes, the poor and the maimed. And everywhere he saw, they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Today, around the world and in our villages, we have the same. People harassed and helpless. Sometimes people who've adopted the victim mode, usually having been on the receiving end of abuse or some other issues in their background. Others who are survivors of abuse and difficulty, and others who are victors over their circumstances despite their troubles. We also sometimes see people so proud that they cannot bend the knee to Christ, for they think they are above humbling. One day we will all bow the knee to Christ, either willingly or unwillingly. You heard earlier Natalie Wood tell the story of Jesus the Good Shepherd from the children's Bible, our new children's slot. The shepherd goes looking for the lost sheep. Jesus is called the Good Shepherd. Some shepherds were bad, so he is distinguished from them by his compassion, his character and his calling. Jesus saw and sees the issues which each person faces today. There's much to be thankful for, but still lots of areas of life that are going to be a mountain to climb. But Jesus is the light of the world as we are when we let the light shine in and through us. So three things from our gospel reading and there'll be two things from our epistle. First of all, Jesus saw the needs, the harassed and helpless. Human beings have often been compared to sheep. Now I've watched the sheep in the field next to and opposite our house over the last few months. The joy in April and May and even today, the lambs are running about and frolicking together. Then the call of their mothers back for feeding. The occasional fright from something or someone. They're grouping together when afraid. They're wandering across the field and finding their own space. None have yet found a way through the well-constructed fences. Well done, Tim. I know he's uh, worked hard with his shepherding. Uh, 
Uh, but we know how clever sheep are because if there is a hole in the fence, they will find that way out and sometimes get into trouble. They, like us, can get lost and need a rescuer. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We have each turned to his own way, as Isaiah puts it. When sheep are harass harassed, there's chaos, running this way and that way, not knowing what to do. That's what Jesus saw and what we see amongst a lot of people today in our nation and our world during this crisis. Second, Jesus recognised the solution. For he saw this, was, saw this, he saw this not as a problem, but as an opportunity. The good news of the gospel is what every human being needs. We all need to know God loves us. He will deliver us from all our fear, fears, bring peace into our hearts and our minds, set us free from guilt and fear and anger too, and help us to rise above victimhood into survivorship and beyond, into being victors over our circumstances to make us into what he wants for our lives. Too many people settle for less than the best. In the words of a Graham Kendrick hymn, Rejoice, Rejoice, Christ is in you, the hope of glory in our hearts, the second and third verses say this, God is at work in us, his purpose to perform, building a kingdom of power, not of words. Where things impossible, by faith shall be made possible. Let's give the glory to him now. Though we are weak, his grace is everything we need. We're made of clay, but this treasure is within. He turns our weaknesses into his opportunities so that the glory goes to him. Jesus sees the opportunities. I met a young person the other day, deeply troubled. A God moment without a doubt. This person was seriously upset and trembling. But as the conversation progressed, suddenly this person began to look calmer. Towards the end, they began to smile. And suddenly the sun came out. And as I prayed for him, they had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And I said, I really felt that. That was a precious moment as that person found peace. Peace. They were harassed and helpless. But Jesus knew and he guided that person to the right place and prompted me to be at the right place at the same time. Now there's thousands more out there and those who are prepared to be part of the harvesting team are very few. Thirdly, Jesus called several of them by name, and there's a list of the 12 disciples there in our reading, and equipped them to go out into this ministry. Jesus does enter lives to transform them, but he uses people to bring that good news. And he said the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Are you a labourer that should be sharing Jesus Christ, but you choose to avoid that responsibility because you don't want to actually step out and do it. Maybe you lack confidence. Jesus wants to bring confidence to you. And if God is speaking to you today, listen to him, obey him, and learn how to share your faith with other people. It's very easy to do. We just have to get over being frozen at the mouth and gain confidence in being able to talk about our faith. And did you notice what Jesus gave to them? We're told he gave them authority. We all need a spiritual authority to tackle the issues of our day in people's lives. Note that these Bits of authority are very specific. To drive out evil spirits, heal every disease and sickness, raise the dead and to go and preach the kingdom of God. Some will say, well, that was for then, but not now. Well, what has changed? By what criteria do we judge scripture? Did not Jesus say we are to obey everything he taught? That's what Matthew, 10, uh, Matthew 28, uh, 16 to 20 tells us. Are people still harassed and helpless? Do they still need to meet the saviour of the world? Does not the gospel have power to change a life, free a person from slavery to sin? 
I've not yet seen with my own eyes someone physically raised from the dead, although I've seen spiritually dead people come to life when they received Christ, but I have seen sick people healed. I have seen demons leave people, and I've seen the presence of the kingdom of God coming to change and transform a life. The gospel has not changed. People today are still trapped within by their own sin, misconception, lies, wounds, others by things done to them. But we can all rise above our history and be victors. And the two little points from Romans 5 as I come to an end. There's some pointers here. First, when we trust Jesus, we have peace with God and our change in the process of character formation begins. Sufferings and troubles teach us to face our imperfections and weaknesses so that just as Jesus found testing in the wilderness before his public ministry began, so we are tested so that we will be prepared, trained, fashioned, made more like him and have confidence that we can cope with the privations and the temptations in the robustness of ministry and that perseverance produces character. And second, Paul writes, we have access to God's grace. He's blessing us with what we don't deserve. And as character is fashioned through difficulties, hope springs into life. Looking back over our own faith growth, we'll recognise the times of trouble during which our faith in him grew. And Paul encourages us further here, that God has poured out his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. And that is what gives us the living hope that we can share with others. Those who've suffered can draw near to those who are suffering and bring help and hope. Our farming community knows all about harvest. When the crop is ready, everyone comes together and works to bring it in. There's a harvest of people in our villages who are harassed and helpless. Many have been touched by God's love in the last three months because many of you have done something about the need to support and help. Your ministries of care have blessed so many people. And I guess you'll know who you've blessed. And many have been so thankful. Maybe the next step is to pray for them to ask the questions of faith. Join a discussion group to explore. Will some of you join in this harvest? befriending others and inviting them to discuss the faith. I'll soon be starting another Exploring Faith course, might even do it on Zoom, and uh, it would be great to have a few people coming along and let's talk about the issues of faith and lost and found. Will you be part of it? Will you encourage somebody to join in? Because without you, the meetings don't happen because you're like me, you are laborers in this harvest. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we are all called to be laborers in the harvest of souls. Help us, Lord, to understand and see what you're calling us to and help us to step out of our own little bubbles of uh, security into doing something more which will bring others to a living faith and deepen our own faith as we share it with others. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And so we come to the end of our sermon and next we'll have uh, our declaration of faith in the words of the creed. And so we declare our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body to life and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we sing our offertory hymn, Thou Whose Almighty Word, and after that we'll have our prayer. Oh, yeah.
So we come to our prayers, the collect for today. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can no, do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Today we pray for those known to us in particular types of need in our community and in our world. We pray for those known to us locally who are uh, ill or housebound. Strengthen Doreen Lonergan, Peter Padmore, Bunny Priestley and Jean Ryden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for marriage, particularly those who are waiting for the ban on marriages to be lifted so they can get married quickly in our churches uh, in the next few weeks. Grant them patience and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in authority, for Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family, for the government and national and local councils. Guide them, we pray, in the ways of justice and righteousness. Grant them wisdom to do what is right for all. And help them not to make mistakes, but to overrule their decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for courage and faith to step out as we restore Sunday worship during July. We ask for restoration of confidence and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose businesses have been ruined, that they may find hope in sadness. And we pray for those with the means to empower entrepreneurs that they may start new work for those in need of employment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And following on from the sermon, we pray for you to call more of our congregations to serve in church leadership in our villages so that the good news of Jesus Christ changes many more lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we finish our prayers with the prayer that Jesus himself taught us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we're coming towards the end of our service, but first we're going to sing our final hymn, which is O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Jesus. 
joining in our worship today. Uh, we'll certainly be having services online for a few more weeks to come, but uh, hopefully we will be back in to our buildings or maybe in our churchyards if the weather is lovely and warm to sing and worship together during July and then on into August. So we come to our final blessing. God the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people in the power of your Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.